Hi there, Oscar Carmona, owner of Healing Grounds Nursery. I also teach the Sustainable Landscaping Program, the Green Gardener Certification class that's offered through uh, Santa Barbara City College. And today we're going to talk about the right plant in the right place. So the first thing we want to talk about is a microclimate in a landscape environment. And what a microclimate is, is a unique area of your garden that is distinct in its conditions from others. And believe it or not, even in a small residential lot, you can have as many as five, six, seven microclimates. Now there's five things that plants need fundamentally to do well, and that is that they need uh, light, they need favorable temperature ranges for the type of plant that it is, they need proper space to grow into maturity, soil conditions also uh, are important, and then of course water. We take these concepts and we apply them to a, to a given site, and here, we're at the Goleta Water District Edible Landscape Demonstration Site, and you can see from their design map here the layout of this garden. One of the first places to start is to go close to any structures that you might have, whether it be a home or a, a garage, and uh, realize that each side of your building structure is a different microclimate, and that has to do with the orientation of the sun as it relates to that building at any given uh, time of the year and also that affects the temperature ranges and that those two conditions are very important to determining what you're going to plant there. If we're looking at this map, uh, basically the, the top part here is the south side of the, of the house or the structure, the north side, the west side here to the right, and over to the left is the, the east side. So what you're going to find is that on the east side is you get, you get the morning light and therefore partial shade loving plants uh, will do favorably better on the east side of your house. The north side will typically generally be in uh, shade. The west and the south sides are usually the hottest growing environments uh, that you can have in your home landscape. And that is because uh, in Santa Barbara we have a south facing orientation and so typically the sun is a direct uh, hit on anything growing on the south side of the, of the building. And similarly, on the west side, uh, you're going to get afternoon sun. As we move away from the house, this happens to be a relatively flat uh, landscape, but you could typically have maybe a slope here. That would be another um, microclimate. You could have poor soil on this side. You could have uh, good soil on the other side. Those would be other two discerning properties for uh, microclimates. Another would be if you had large trees. These are not very large at this point. Someday they'll, they'll grow into larger plants, but as they do, they're going to create more shade. So shade is also another discerning microclimate environment that you need to pay attention to. And consequently, you wanna make sure that you're gonna put shade loving plants in those areas. The second point I'd like to make relative to de determining the right plant in the right place is to avail yourself to the important information that comes along with the plants in the, at the nursery and in, in the pots and that would be what we call the, a pot tag. Now on the pot tag, you're gonna find the five pieces of information that I told you were very important for determining uh, the plant's overall health and in growing. One of the biggest mistakes people make is they find uh, a nice, beautiful little potted plant in a one gallon pot and they think, oh, how cute, and they go and plant it right up next to a building or right up next to other plants so it looks filled in at the beginning not realizing that that plant really wants to be 40 feet tall and 30 feet wide. And so if you look on the pot tag, you're going to find those important bits of information. It's important to, uh, to look at that. And if you're not good at remembering, go ahead and place it right next to the plant upon planting. And that's going to remind you exactly what those conditions are that are going to help make that plant grow successfully. If you don't have uh, access to a pot tag because you lost it, there's two other sources of information that I want to mention that I think you should avail yourself to. Uh, the second is uh, called the Western Garden Book, and it's a wonderful book with lots of really great pictures and not a, necessarily a lot of wording, but it's got the important pieces of information, again, as I said, that you're gonna need to help that plant grow to a healthy, a mature plant. And the third thing, which is a really a great a resource in our community, is the WaterWise SB website. It has a Spanish translation. If you want your landscaper, perhaps a Spanish-speaking landscaper, to reference it, there's information in Spanish. 
and it's got not only plants and their conditions, but there's a wide selection, a amazing selection of plants for just about any microclimate uh, environment that you can uh, find in your home or landscape environment. The third point I'd like to make about water management is that you need to understand that plants access water that's available in the root zone. That's where the roots are growing and for the vast majority of plants, whether they be shrubs, trees, or uh, smaller plantings, that root zone is typically about 24 inches. For lawns, it's about 8 inches. And so basically you want to verify that the water is saturating that root zone and once it does, then any water beyond that, watering beyond that point is basically uh, wasted water. And one of the ways that you can determine uh, how the water is um, leaching through that root zone is with a soil probe, and I have one here. And um, simply enough, you can insert the soil probe down into and around the plants into the root zone. Give it a little twist here, and this is a well hydrated garden site. And you can pull it up and uh, you can basically see here that the darker area, this is the top, is, is much more um, moist and it, it dries out as you get down, but it's still, there's still some moisture here. With this kind of indicator, we know that the irrigation system is probably doing a good job of watering uh, make sure that the time allotment for that cycle is no uh, more than it takes for the water to pass through into the root zone. Again, no more than 24 inches. So once you determine the microclimates in your home environment, uh, landscape environment, or, or, or work environment, and you've uh, thought a little bit about the options that are at your disposal for planting in those environments, it's time to put those two things together in, to create the right plant in the right place. Being able to do so is going to enable you to enjoy your plants through maturity in all their natural beauty, but I think more importantly, it's going to provide you with uh, less disease problems and pest problems because the fundamental thing to, to, to know is in, for the right plant in the right place is that they're less susceptible to disease and pests.